In this lesson, we'll be setting up our React environment. You need to have Node.js installed, like I said in the previous lesson. To do this, you can head on to the Node.js website and download Node.js for your device. And then also, you need to have a terminal. Now here, I'm using my VS Code terminal, which you can open with Command Shift P and then enter Toggle Terminal. So if I do that again, Toggle Terminal, I have the terminal here, but you can use any terminal application of your choice. And to confirm that Node.js is installed, you can run Node version like this so currently i have node 21 and also like i said when you installed node it also installs npm so i can do npm version and here i have this version of npm and we're going to be using npm to install dependencies or do several stuff from the npm registry so if you head on to the npm registry this is where a lot of people publish packages to and you can download packages here so for example there is the slint package there is also the react package like i also said you can use other package managers like yarn or pnpm or the rest for this course i'll be sticking with npm now when it comes to setting up a react project there are several packages you might need to have a good development experience you might choose to set this up yourself installing one package after the other and configuring several things but thankfully you don't have to because we have popular tools like create react app and we also have vite which takes care of that for us so you don't need to set it up by yourself in this course we're going to be using vite but you can as well use create react app i would recommend you use vite so you can follow along with this course so if you scroll down to the instructions on the vite website you can use vite for several templates by the way but we're going to be using it for react so here you run npm create vite latest so back in my terminal first i want to go to the directory where i want to set up my react environment and that is in desktop github yep this is where i want to put my react project and now I can run npm create v latest. First thing it's going to ask me is what is the name of your project? Or well, name of my project is React Course. Then it's going to ask me what framework I want. I want React. And then it's going to ask me what variant. Now you can use React with TypeScript, but for now let's just stay with JavaScript. And as we progress in this course, we would add TypeScript to our project. And we now have this. Then you can open the project in VS Code or in your code editor. Okay, now we have all of these, which are the files that v it automatically created for us. I can open my terminal again and now I run npm install which would install the dependencies in this package.json and I'll come back to the package.json in a second but yeah let's run npm install and with the packages installed, I can now run npm run dev. If you are thinking where I got these commands from, this is coming from the docs here. So you see npm install, then npm run dev. And now I can run the development server for my React project. And it's currently on this URL localhost 5173. So I can come here on a new tab. And now I have my React project created with Vite. But let's go in and look at some of these files that vit installed or created so let's start from the package.json if you're not familiar with package.json you can think of it as that manifest file that contains a lot of information about your project like the dependencies you're using the script you want to run different configurations name and several information like that so if we come here you have a name is this project private what is the version type module and then here you have a script scripts are just a way to define custom commands in your project so here we have dev what this means is that in your terminal let me create a new terminal here what this means is that when you run npm run dev it is going to run vit when you run npm run build it's going to run vit build and you can create your own custom commands for example i can have a custom command called decode which is going to run npm run install now if you go back here and you run npm run decode it's going to run npm run install Store. So as we saw, the dev script allows us to set up this development server that we have on the left. npm run build would run vit build. And what this would do is when you have projects, you have the development version of your project, which would have a lot of, you know, tools and packages that would allow you have a good development experience. And then you also have the production version of your project. The production version is what you would host for users to see. This is going to create that production version. And in fact, we can run this. So if I run npm run build, 
So it creates a dist folder. Dist is short for distribution. So this is what you would host on your hosting platform. That is what your users would see. You have lint, which would run s lint for linting your applications. Let me remove this decode. And then you have preview, which would run vit preview. It allows you to preview the production version of your project, which is what you have in a dist. So if I run npm run preview, so now we have this url so if i open the 5173 this is the production version of our react project so moving on we have dependencies dependencies are like packages you need for your project and here we have react and we have react dom you're probably thinking what is the difference now i'm going to make a separate video where i go more into the difference between these two packages but a simple way to understand this is that react is a library that allows you to create components allows you to do some interesting things and react dom is that library that allows you to render your react components on the dom remember dom document object model which is associated with html so react on its own has no business on the dom in fact there are a lot of interesting ways you can use react you can use react for mobile a lot of devs are using react for in several interesting things which i'm going to cover in that more in-depth video so react dom is now that binding that's tool that binds react to the dom and then you have dev dependencies which are dependencies we need for development and here we have types react we have a bunch of them i'm not going to go into so much detail on all of these dev dependencies enough for package.json another file we have here is vit.config.js and can think of this as a configuration file for vit and if you check the vit config here you can see several ways you can configure vit but i'm not going to be focusing on that in this course because this course is for react not for vit yeah read me uh, package log index.html uh, this index.html is a very important file when it comes to react here you have div root and div when you create a home page it's going to live under this root create an about page it's going to live here contact page is going to live here so this is like the root of the several pages and uh, components that you create in your react application here in this script we have a reference to src main.gsx if you're thinking what gsx is don't worry we're going to cover that as we progress uh we can still open our application here to be sure everything is working we have git ignore this is for git stuff we have slint this is for slint configurations now we go to src here we have main.gsx which is what we referenced here now this main.gsx think of it as an entry point to your react this is the entry point to your project this is where react is going to dump everything that it does and then this is the entry point to that react let me close this here so you can see so here you can see that we are doing react dom dot create root blah 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 dot render see here we're using react dom because this is what is responsible for rendering your react stuff on the browser so here we do create root and you can see we're using documents dot element by id root which is this here remember i said this is like your entry point so you're selecting this and then you are rendering so dot render and then you have this stuff here react dot strict mode then you have this app then you have react or strict mode if you're thinking what is strict mode don't worry we're progressing in this course from beginner to advanced so later on we'll get to understand how strict mode actually works but you have this and then you have your app component one thing you see here is that this is like a normal html tag that you have where you have your tag and then you have this your your closing or you can even choose to have something like div and div like this this is your normal element in html right well you can think of this also as an element but this is more of a react element which you can also call a react component which you can also call component for short so you have this app component and where is this coming from well this is coming from here so now if we open app.gsx this is our app component you declare function app this has some state and then you have all of this bunch of html stuff div a tag img tag uh, you have your click event handlers and you have a bunch of stuff here and then you do export default app and that is why you can import app from this because you are exporting it here and yeah you have all this stuff here you are importing a couple of things here yeah don't worry we're going to look at that as we progress in this course but yeah this is your app component you can see vite plus react which is the vite plus react showing here and if i change this to decode plus react see we have decode plus react here so this is your app component and when you're building applications you're going to create several components you can have 20 50 
you can have as many components and then you can compose all those components in a certain way to build your application. Don't worry, our next lesson is on components. So we're going to learn more about components. You also have your CSS file here, which you can see we are importing like this. So when you're importing, you can import normal JavaScript files or you can also import CSS. So as you can see, you can also import assets like this SVG asset. Here you have your asset under the source and then you also have this public directory and this public directory you can think of it as a place where you store your static assets you can store your png you can store some css there and then you have node modules which we got by running npm install there are a lot of packages here that are required for our project and you have dist which like i showed you is the production version of your project which we got from running npm run build now one more concept i would like you to understand is something called hot reloading and this is something that tools like vit helps you configure you can choose to configure this yourself but vit does that for you and what this means is that if i go back to app.gsx if i change this to u plus react i don't need to refresh before i get a reloading and i get this u so with hot reloading which is very specific to development experiences it allows you to see instant feedback based on your changes without having to come here and then click refresh so we have u plus react here we have count is count and i can say count is not count and over here you see how not comes so this greatly improves your development experience and this is not something specific to vit several tools have this i just wanted you to see that so that you would understand how things are changing quickly um, by the way on my vs code i have auto save so if i change something it auto saves and once it saves i have that hot reloading so if you don't have auto save on then you'd have to first save your file because it is on saving your file that the hot reloading occurs now i've said a lot about components said a lot about jsx but what do these even mean let's get to understand that in the next lesson